and Brad, the two most famous physical therapists on the internet. Hi folks, I'm Bob Shaw, physical therapist. Brad Heineck, physical therapist. We are the most famous physical therapists on the internet. In our opinion, of course, Bob. Thank you, Brad. Thank you for coming with me here again today. Yeah, well, here we are. Let's go to work. <laughs> I want to throw them off a little bit with that. But today, we're bad. We're going to talk about the push-pull dynamometer. It measures strength, and it also is really good for measuring job duty uh, limits. So, like for example, if you have somebody coming in and they say, "I can't. I'm not allowed to lift any more or push any more than 25 pounds." Right. How do you know that? Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah you, you really have to have something to measure because that's what you know they're going to have, and, and you want to make right. sure you're in compliance. Um, and as a therapist, you want to make sure you're doing the right thing for the patient and not overstressing them uh, or coming up with values because sometimes the doctor may ask the therapist, uh, you know, come yeah, up how with much, some safe values. How much values. do you think they could lift right now safely without increased pain? Exactly. And uh, I've done this and I, I was shocked at how much some things were and how, you know, how easy some things were as far right. as weight bearing, you know, like pushing a wheelchair. Uh, it was a lot less took a lot less pu uh, pushing power than I thought. Sure, I mean, it right, was, once you start measuring it, it changes your outlook yeah. a little bit. And today we were uh, fortunate enough that uh, FEI, which is, I'm gonna read it right, make sure I got it right, Fabrication Enterprises Inc, FEI, um, they have a, you know, they've been around for 40 years, I believe, and they've okay. got a ton of products, but they were, they sent us a baseline dynamometer. Uh, baseline is, um, Kind of their category for a lot of i think measuring devices sure. calibration devices mm -hmm. wouldn't you say brad and so if you are a therapist I would, I would go ahead and make sure you get their catalog we'll have some links below um otherwise you can order these direct from online they have distributors too sure so you bet okay but bob wait i see 327 people waiting out there you for know it, it really varies a lot from day to day how many people come in and say well, hello, doesn't it yeah it's so, a rainy day so they're coming in if you are new to our channel please take a second to subscribe to us we provide videos on how to stay healthy and fit and pain-free and we upload every day subscription button here or here or somewhere over there and also please wander over to facebook give us a likey and uh we'll likey you back too exactly so. okay bob the uh dynamometer so a dynamometer is you know, something, well, what's that term? It's just a measuring device to measure force. Okay, okay? gotcha. Push uh, and pull. Right. It could be, you know, this is a linear. It could be torque, but that's what, we're, we're not worried about torque on this particularly. So let's give a few examples. Let's say I'm going to uh, lift your legs up into this bed. Okay. Uh, let's say that you have, you're injured, uh, you're a larger person, well, you're a taller person, but maybe you have someone right. that's, you know, you could have someone that's three, 400 pound, and we got to lift the legs up, and we have someone that's injured. Can they do it or not within And this is limits? a common case of, of some of the people that we see. We work in a lot of nursing homes, uh, and we do a lot of therapy in, in some of the nursing homes, and, and a lot of the uh, uh, nursing assistants, or the CNAs as they call them, uh, they they have to lift people's people uh, people's legs up onto wheelchairs sure and also up into beds so right. this is a really common thing and so you know, th there's a, some attachments that just come with, comes with one is this nice little carabiner attachment and here's uh, this one's for pushing this one for why don't you pulling give this a close up yep, view of there this we thing. go and show the gauge too Brad if you sure. will. Um, in this gauge, they have different uh, ratings. This one's up to 250. They have one for 50 pounds, one for 75 pounds, and uh, also the conversion to kilo kilograms as well is on the uh, same dial. That so, one goes up to 250 pounds, Brad? 250, yep. Okay. Okay. So we're just going to use the strap here. What is that strap called again? Stretch out strap. Stretch out strap. They work yeah. great. We use it for a lot of things. Yeah. Now, Bob, you're just going to relax because you're going to assume you don't have any strength right. in your legs. And I'm just going to pick it up and lift. My gosh, Bob, what do you got in those <laughs> legs? Wow. I thought I had a hollow leg. That's yeah. why I kept eating so much. You know, it felt pretty, you know, it's saying 25 pounds of, of okay. leg. Uh, 25 pounds isn't that much, but when you're using it, body versus a dumbbell or right. something you know you're, you're, exactly. you're dealing with different uh it's body a little mechanics. more awkward exactly and, and, and that's often part of the problem is the positions that you're in when you're applying these forces right. i mean exactly. that's, that's where it can be a lot and of there's some controversy the with therapists on 25 pounds in one situation could be light and others but at least we know that's 25 pounds right and you can see this comes right off quite easily now let's say someone part of their job duty is to push some furniture from one 
part of sure. the room they're cleaning underneath it and we need to find out how much force it takes to push it's got a nice little indicator dial that gives you a max so again, uh, you, pressure. well, you want to talk about analog versus digital too, Brad? Well, uh, this is analog, point. so it has a meter when you have, we have the indicator arrow that you can go to zero and it gives you your peak force is what we're looking for. So digital um, would actually be a readout. Right. I mean, you'd see right. the digital readout. The nice thing about the digital is a lot of times they'll have the breakaway force, which it takes to break the object from the friction, and then as you push it, usually that force goes down, sure. and the digital may have the breakaway plus the consistent force for pushing it. That's getting a little technical, because yeah. we're looking at this. I'm going to give this a push, and and actually, the I could see what was going on. The breakaway force is only five pounds more than the, the push. We had 30 pounds, and it went down to 25 once it got moving. Okay, gotcha. But either way, to get it moving, you got to do 30 pounds. Right. I mean, even exactly. if it's a breakaway. Yep. So. All right. Now, the other nice thing, as far as therapists out there, this can be used for manual muscle testing. Right. Okay. Uh, this is the way I like to use it. And normally, when we test somebody's strength, you know, if I was going to test Brad's uh, bicep strength, I would just put my hand here, and he pulls up, and I gauge it by, you know, basic experience. I mean, if he goes this this far, at least this far, with the, and I can break it right away, it's a three. I mean, there's different, it's very subjective, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Right, right. So you know, he, I do it, if the person can go up like that against gravity, I call that a, a three. Right. If they can just kind of get it going, a two, two. and a one is a tray. And, you know, therapists know that, and they know how they rate it. But well, a lot of times you'll see differences between two therapists testing. Yeah, so this, exactly. this makes it a, little, a, a bit more accurate. Yeah, more so. objective. Okay, so let's let's do a bicep on okay. you, Bob. Um, yeah, why don't you stand up, stand once, up? Bob? You got his head cut off. Yeah. Yeah, cut it off. That's the we best don't need part. That. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna for I'm just doing a, a breakaway test, and this would be when it when he has to give. I'm gonna I'm gonna pretend to break away because okay. he can't break this. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna push, push, push. Okay, I want oh, you to sorry. do that, but I don't want this to happen. Okay, I just gotcha. try and just keep your trunk as steady as possible. Just that. Arm, keep the elbow steady. Okay. Was that painful? No. Okay, so that was just the strength. Yeah. Okay, now let's do the other arm. Was this one painful? Yes, this okay. one hurts. This one hurts. Okay. And now, uh, this time, because it hurts, I'm going to have you pull up okay. until the pain stops. I'm going to see, because I don't want to max this out. Sure. I don't want to hurt your arm more than it is. So you just go ahead and push when it starts to hurt. Stop. Oh, okay. Yeah. He's got some pain. And here it was hard to read. It was because of the pain. So we've got about five pounds versus 25 pounds over sure. here. Now we're and that makes sense again. You don't want to, if it's really hurting, you don't want to put it under even more stress. You want the person applying the stress. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, you don't want to injure yeah. the person testing them. Right. They'll give up. <laughs> right. Know, they'll, they'll know when to give up. And what's very helpful about that is then when you have someone you can see over time that they'll be able to exert more force as treatment goes on. Right. And uh, hopefully as they're getting better. Right. And, and plus a lot of times people say, oh, I'm not getting any better. No, before you could only push five pounds. Now you can push 20 pounds before right. it starts to hurt. So Because it, it goes slowly and they don't recognize it right. on a day-to-day -day basis. And insurance companies like this too. Right, they like exactly. The, the objective measurements. Exactly. Good Good point, Bob. Um, let's do uh, a weight-bearing one. Let's say for sure. the hip flexion. Okay. Why don't you lay on your back first? Okay. For non-weight-bearing first? Yeah. So let's say we're measuring hip flexors. So here he's in a... Uh, position and he's at 90 degrees with the hips, so the f hip flexors are creating all the strength to, to uh, get the measurement. So hold it there. We're going to pretend this leg is weak. Not, it, well, let's put, pretend it's injured, but it's not painful. Okay. It's weak, but it's not flared up. Sure. Okay, because it just got injured and we're coming along, and I'm going to push like that. Now I'm thinking Bob's an athlete, he's going back to the sport. What does he care how strong it is laying down? We want to go to a functional level. So here we've got 26 pounds. Why don't you stand up? But when you're running around and moving, you're not laying on your back. Here you go. Thanks. I want to do it in a functional position. So go ahead, bring that hip up to 90 degrees again. What's nice about this, too, is, again, you can compare the two sides. And you can say, hey, you're within 90% of your, right. other, your other side. And... Hold it there. Don't let me move it. Hold, 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 hold. That's pretty good, Bob. 
Thank this you. Is, this is this is just about as strong as laying down, which I didn't expect because you're weight bearing. Sure. Uh, you got the cane and whatnot, but still, these are things that you want to keep in mind as a therapist. Make sure you document: is it supine hip flexion or is it standing and weight bearing, holding a cane, or are both hands on the parallel bars? Sure. All these things can make a big difference. So make sure you're consistent on how you test. And you can and also do this with pain. I mean, so if I'm having pain in my hip flexor. Okay, go so ahead. Again, now I'm going to hold it yeah, still. You're not going to push up. I'm. Or you're not pushing down. Yeah. I'm pushing up. Oh, oh. You know. Yep. So I'm the one that's again exerting the limit here. Right. So we don't need to worry about injuring it more. Exactly. So, so that that was what I call you know the pain test. The book calls it something differently, but it makes more sense to me as a therapist for that. And then the brake test was where I'm pushing. Sure. There is different tests you can do with it. Right. Do you want to do ankle dorsiflexion, Brian? Oh, sure. sure. Ankle you, dorsal, it's very common. You know, that so you I can, would lay down flat. Yep, lay down flat. I, I like to keep the feet over the edge so that the heels, when you got movement, don't interfere so with the bed. So this would be someone who has foot drop. Right, maybe, foot maybe, drop. And they're not able to, um, you want to see if it's improving over time. Right. So you could use a, a gauge like this. Right. So supine position, ankles free, okay? In other words, he's got free ankle motion without interference anywhere, okay? And this would be good for someone with a stroke. You know? Oh, sure. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay, so I want you to hold it up there. Now, don't let me move it, Bob. Hold it strong. Hold, 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 hold. Good. And you can see that Bob did a really good job of someone will kind of jerk right. like that when they're weak. Yeah, um, they're trying to hold it through. Exactly. Yeah. In this situation, you know, if it's a stroke, we got one good leg, one that's affected. We're going to measure both of them. And then we have the goal. We got 50 pounds here, 10 pounds here and we know where we want to get to, um, or where the other one was likely, you know, we're close You know to what it. this is used for sometimes too, and this is not necessarily someone who's faking, but Funny. it does one time, and then you test them a couple more times and their numbers are all over the place. Right. So let's say they do 25 the first time, but the second time they do 10, and the third time they do 30. It might be someone that's, you know what I mean? Not being sincere right, because they're, right. they're, they're trying to pretend that it's weak. Right. So we got little tricks us there, but you got to watch us. <laughs> but, so. th you know, that is another point they do bring up. They always say do three tests and average them. And that can give you some indication of malingering. I think right. that's a term. Or, you know, the first test might be 50 pounds and then it's 40 and then it's 20 because of fatigue. Right. That would make more sense. Right. But what wouldn't make sense would be 50 pounds, 20 pounds. And then 75 pounds. Right. <laughs> and, and we know that's something we all have to take into consideration. Yeah, it's, it's just part of the fact that we look at. Right. So. Exactly. So there so you again, go. FBI, get the catalog if you're a therapist or a, a rehab person. So, and it got a lot of attachments here, right? Yeah, Brad? we got a few more attachments in here. They have attachments for handles on it. So if you want to do the, the uh, lifting test, which is very co common. Uh, they didn't, we don't have them with this one, but it does attach to this. They do have them I available. I can measure my fish with this. You yep. just caught a nice northern this, this I, uh, weekend. I did need this. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't know if I have a big enough scale, though. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, everybody, so, for yeah, watching. For, for fishermen, we've got the answer. <laughs> All right. Take care.